second place here, Stiegler of Austria, who beat Tommy by only three tenths of a second. He got a bouquet of flowers, which he looked at skeptically as if they were poison ivy. Top honors to Roger Staub, Swiss. Got a hug from America's David. Uh, David Gorsuch, and congratulations to Tommy from Chief of Course, Willie Shuffler, who himself did a great job. Now the news had to get out all over the globe, which it did in various ways. Pity the poor Japanese newsman. He had to write the whole thing out in longhand in his native characters vertically first. It had to be translated horizontally into English to be cabled to Japan where it was all unraveled again in Tokyo. He was always one event behind. The skating rink, anxious mothers watching, skating by pairs. Nina and Stanislav Zhuk, champions of the Soviet Union on the ice. Pigeon out had been in the rafters. Top honors to this pair from Canada, Barbara Wagner and Robert Paul, Toronto. While their families watched, he was 21 years old, she a year younger. And when he was 10, they thought he'd never walk again, much less skate. Polio hit him, and for a year he fought it. And while in this fight, he vowed that if he recovered, he would make skating his career, and that's what he's done. Today, he reached the top rung of the ladder, a gold medal in the Olympics for himself and his partner. Congratulations to the family, and the poor Japanese was still working on the slalom. Boy, didn't have to walk very far, could ride in the Snowball Express. Newsmen came in on, on weasels, and then we had a rather casual bulldozer operator, and the next thing I knew, there was a compact weasel. Over here at the start of the second run, final run of the girls' slalom, and they were going through that Let's stay calm before the race begins phase. Canada was leading and America was fourth as we go into the final run. Two runs are added together, total score. And Hegby, 21, secretary from Ottawa, leading the world. She's off, but it's a tough spot to be in. For if you take it easy and re rely on your lead, some other girl is almost sure to overtake you in the last run. And if you go fast, you may make an error, fall, and lose the whole race forever right there. Played it smart, had a good fast run with no mistakes. Now all she has to do is wait. Wait for 43 girls. Any of whom might be her top 10, of course, more liable to. One of them, Betsy Snyder, who had been fourth in the opening run. And none knew more keenly than she that eight years ago, another U.S. girl who had been fourth in the opening run came to a gold medal in the final. Andy beat Lawrence and proved it can be done. And Betsy Snyder was doing her very level best here to emulate Andy. Skating, holding at the end. A big shout went up from the crowd. She'd gone from second, from fourth to second place, not quite first, and to quote her directly, 
I never went so fast in my cotton picking life. She did a good job. Penny for two, who now own two silver medals. Trying once more for that el elusive gold. Once more deluded her. Just wasn't her week. She wasn't the only one to fall there. The gold medal winner of yesterday, Yvonne Ruick, fell and was so upset she just pointed her skis down and headed for home. Well, that's not right, he said. No, she ought to have climbed back up and continued through the course. As this girl did. And pity the poor Italian. Big course being Penny winced as we watched. Yolanda Shear of Italia caught in a trap. Mama, while the clock ticked on. Mama Mia, what do I do now? Well, you climb back up, as she did. Painstakingly, you go through the gates. And she got a good hand from the crowd for her sportsmanship. Now, at last, all the top flight skiers had come down, and finally it was obvious that Anne Hegby did one. Now she was alone in her glory. This was a very historic occasion, but never before had our neighbor to the north won a gold medal in Olympic skiing. And we welcomed Anne Hegby to the ranks of illustrious names like Gretchen Fraser, Andy Mead Lawrence, Lucille Wheeler, the thief. Then over at the rink here, a huge crowd had shown up. In fact, there wasn't an empty seat. A couple got here at the last minute. The usher said, well, you're up in the 18th row. She's over there in the fourth row. Took care of that friendship, but they were happy to get in. On the ice, David Jenkins. 24 years old, in Colorado Springs. Four years ago in this event at the Olympics, he placed third, beaten out by a member of his own family, Hayes Jenkins, who's now retired. So they figured maybe this was the year. He had a great deal to offer. Maneuvers like Flying camel, double axle, and a very complicated one called a triple south cow. I just hope he doesn't see that hat. That'll be his undoing. Luckily, he didn't. Came through here, got a standing ovation from the crowd, and the highest marks I've ever seen given a skater by the judges. 6.0 is perfect. You hardly ever see that. Five is excellent. He got one six. He got all the rest five nines, except one stinker. He gave him a five eight. Oh, well, he said you can't win them all. But he won top on as a gold medal, and these boys work hard for it. They practice six hours a day, winter and summer, for maybe five minutes in the ice. Over the slalom hill, then we're about to start their final run. Hedesir of Austria on the left, memorizing the gates. 69 of them, and you have to learn them in inverse order as you climb up. Beaulieu, France, getting his edges, Good and sharp. German team waxing up, and one of them, 18-year-old Willie Bogner, sitting on top of the world, for he had the best time in the opening run. No, he said, I just leave it the way it is. Schneider, the old-timer from Switzerland, his fourth Olympics, resting up, relaxing. Couldn't swim him his first. Not too relaxed. Good luck again, old man. Stein Erickson of Norway, forerunner. You'll see him again. Just wait. Lowell Thomas at the microphone. And up at the
in the top, shuffling his skis back and forth nervously. Willie Bokner, son of the ski pants designer, and I think his mind's going back to that first run. Let's take a look at it ourselves. It was at dawn, not many people saw it. But those who did will never forget it. watching him and his father just do it again. The whole world was watching Willie and hoping for him. If you can just do it again, you'll be one of the youngest Olympic ski champions in history. And down he came, smoothly and easily. It's halfway, said his father. And at gate 63, flash though he climbed back up went through the gate he was figuring others might fall here he could still place in the first three and on he went but a fall like that is unnerving and Willie's timing was knocked out a bit the last gate fell again now his dream shattered Willie skied across the line such are the heartaches of the Olympic Games Willie had been right, though. Others did fall at exactly that same gate. The Frenchman, Bozon, who had been third in the opening run, had a good chance to win. Fell and slid so far down, there was no hope of climbing back up. Chicky Guy of Japan, a tremendous skier, who placed second four years ago in the slalom and then retired, only to have his native land of Japan plead with him to race once more in 1960 and reluctantly chicked in. He wasn't quite in shape. He fell at the same game. Schneider, the old timer, came on down, lumbering along, but doing well. He'd been racing every year since 1948. 39 years old. He caught a ski tip in this same place. When he saw what had happened, he decided to just relax and enjoy himself here. Start trading now for 64. Frenchman, Molia, who had a good opening run, watch his left ski tip, see how close it comes to one of these gates. number three here. Then for the next minute or two, every single one who came on down here hit gate 63 and was having a tough time. So the gate was taking care of them. Looked like a mass artillery barrage. Then the spectator that I mentioned came on down on his stomach here. Somebody yelled out, check his credentials. Look at his camera film and went ahead and placed 18. Roaring like a lion, Leitner of Austria. And you may have noticed that up until now, Austria has not won a single gold medal in the Alpine ski event, which is most unusual. Skiing is the national sport in Austria. They were out for blood today. Leitner placed second here, silver medal. And he left teammate Ernst Hinnesir, 27 years old, a farmer from Kitzbühel, to complete the job. Six foot three. He gets down through the gates with amazing agility for his height. 